Omaha woman traveled to Washington, D.C. this week to give a voice to her and her two boys during Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill. The three suffer from a rare bone disease, and she says she will not stop fighting until there's a cure. She spoke to reporter Peter Zampa from our exclusive D.C. Bureau. Nina Nizar is one of 22 people in the world who suffers from Janssen's metaphyseal chondrodysplasia, a progressive and debilitating skeletal deformity. She was in Washington for Rare Disease Week on Capitol Hill. My whole life is on standstill. I'm just for my kids to fight this battle. Nizar was misdiagnosed for 32 years, undergoing three dozen surgeries in the process. When she had her two sons, she realized she had passed on the disease to them. So she came to Washington to speak with top health officials who she says know how to find them a cure. I feel so empowered and I know that my boys and myself don't have to go through this for nothing. Nizar says she thinks the cure for their disease could be the gateway to a cure for more common diseases like osteoporosis. She thinks legislation is key in this fight, so she had a meeting with Senator Ben Sass that addressed just that. Nothing's going to be possible without the backing of, um, you know, legislation. You know, there needs to be uh, not just attention for just the rare diseases that form the 7,000 numbers, but for ultra-rare diseases that could potentially unlock treatment to more common diseases. Senator Sass said in a written statement that research is critical, and so is preventing Washington from putting bureaucratic layers between patients and cures. Nina's story struck a chord here in Washington with researchers and legislators alike. I think our, our journey has been a real um, eye-opener for us and for everybody who's been following us. Reporting in Washington, Peter Zampa, WWT6 News. Thanks, Peter. Now, a little bit more on the disease that Nina's fighting. You see, most cases result from a spontaneous genetic change. It really just comes out of nowhere. In most cases, the diagnosis is first suspected during infancy or early childhood. 